everyone, this is Kate from the blog Educational Technology and today I'm going to go over my top 10 things I think every teacher should know how to do in Active Inspire. I'm going to start with number 10, using the resource browser. Over here you have your different browsers. Here we have the page browser, it shows all my pages in my document. We also have the resource browser which comes next. So if I wanted to insert a new page, I'd come to insert page and now I have a blank page and there are all these different resources that you could use. So for example, if you wanted graph paper, you could come and find some graph paper that you would want to use and drag it on. There are tons of things here. You could spend hours exploring them. You can also download resource packs from Promethean Planet for your use. Number nine, use math tools. Another important thing I think all teachers should know is how to use math tools. You have two ways of getting to your math tools. The first thing you can do is go to tools, math tools. You can also get to it from this hammer and wrench and you can go find math tools. Okay, You have some really cool things here. You have protractors, compasses, you have a calculator, and you also have a dice roller, which is super fun. Another tool I really like using is if you come down to more tools, you have a clock. And if you wanted to give your students a countdown clock, you could do this with, you know, and they have all these fun animal noises that will sound when you're done, which is kind of fun. Number eight, layering objects. One easy way to layer objects is to come to your objects browser and here you can see all the objects on your page. So if I wanted to put my word so it was behind my square, I could drag it down to my bottom layer or I could drag my square to the top layer. Now I can put my square over top the word. If I want the word to be in the top layer, then I could drag that up the top layer and my shape down to the middle layer, the bottom layer, and now I can put the word over top the shape. So this will definitely come in handy when you're making lessons. Number seven, locking objects so they can't move. This is one of the most popular questions I get. Right now you can see this square is all over the place. I can move it anywhere I want, but sometimes you don't want things to be able to move. The easiest way to lock them is to right click the object and then select locked. So if you wanted to play a matching game where they were able to move the word and put it on top of the shape, for example, um, now you have your square locked, but the word isn't. Number six, use the drag copy function to clone objects. If I want to be able to make an infinite amount of these same squares, I could come here and right click it and click on drag copy. When you go into presentation mode, you can see that you can drag and drag and drag and drag and you'll have a bazillion of these. One way I use the drag a copy function with my students is word building. So here, if we wanted to spell the word bat, I can drag the letters up onto the fence, but I still have the entire alphabet here in front of me. Another really cool tool you have is the handwriting recognition tool. If you come up to tools, you can find the handwriting recognition tool. So if your students come up and they write a word with the pen, it will automatically switch it to text. Another thing we have here is the shape recognition tool. It pretty much does the same thing. So it just cleans things up for you, which can also come in handy. Number four, use the capture tool. To get to the capture tool, you could come to desktop tools. And when you hover over this, you can see the capture. So you have a bunch of different options here. You could do a full screen, so I could get everything on my screen. I could do just the window. Here you could do a freehand, so you could draw around something. 
if I wanted to go from a point to point, I could do that. If I just wanted to do an area snapshot, I could click on that. And then I'm going to select the area that I want to capture. And then you have choices about whether you want it to go to the current page, a new page, or wherever you want to put it. So it makes that fun camera noise. And then I can return to my flip chart and I see my text was copied. Number three, locate free flip charts on prometheumplanet.com. Let's be honest, a lot of us don't have a lot of time or might not be comfortable creating our own resources. But thanks to Promethean Planet, there's a place where you can go to find pre-made lessons. If I go to prometheumplanet.com and click on resources, you can search for things. So for example, if I wanted to see what is available out there for my first grade reading curriculum, I might type in Hardcourt Trophies first grade and click search. And now I have a list of a bunch of free flip charts I could use. And all I would have to do is download them. So if I wanted to preview it first, I could click on preview. So this is a really valuable resource for anybody who's using Active Inspire software because it gives you free things that you can use in your classroom. So here you can edit your search criteria to help narrow your search results. Number two, Magic Ink. This one's really cool and your students will have a lot of fun with it. You could start with something like text and then all you're going to do is find a shape. You can draw your shape over top. Now the next part's important, you need to come to your object browser and you need to move the shape to the top layer. From there you could go back to presentation mode and come to tools and magic ink and then if you go over it with your magic ink it erases that top layer. One of the ways I used this was in my pumpkin time mini unit. I did a sort of mad libs thing where the students would go in and fill in the blanks ahead of time and then they could use the magic ink to reveal the rest of the text to read the story. Number one, hide things. This is one of my favorite things to do, especially in the primary classroom with Active Inspire. You can make basically like memory or matching games by hiding things. So here I've created the word red twice and I locked these in place so you can't move them. Now I'm going to drag these rectangles over top. Now if I go to my action browser and select my rectangle, you can click on hidden. You want to find your target, so I'm going to select shape one and click OK. Then hit apply changes. It's really important you remember that part. Now if your student clicked on that, it would disappear and when they clicked on it again, it would reappear. So this would be great for a matching game. Again, we're going to go back into design mode. We're going to click on our object, click hidden, browse for it. You're going to find the second rectangle and click OK, and then hit apply changes. If you go back into presentation mode, again, you can click on them and then re-click. This is an example of a matching game that I created in Active Inspire. So here I am in presentation mode. My students would click on a pumpkin and try to find a rhyming match. If they didn't get it, they'd click it and turn it back over. So there's my match. So this would be great for an independent learning center. Thank you so much for viewing my tutorial on the top 10 things every teacher should know how to do in Active Inspire. I hope you'll check back frequently for updates on my blog, Educational Technology. Please also follow me on Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, and Google+. Thanks! Have a great day!